What's up, everybody? It's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing. We're back to talk about five flies for the month of October. We're welcoming Courtney, as, hey guys. as always, Tanner. As yeah. always. What's up? Just yeah. another month, another Just Tanner. Another, month, another Tanner. It's the boys. Another yeah. day. Uh, Courtney, how have you been? I've been good. How are you? I'm doing all right. You've been fishing? A little bit. You, do you like fall fishing? A little bit. Sick. Yeah. How about Courtney you? likes fall fishing. Sick. Let's go. You like fall fishing? A little bit. Hell yeah. Do you guys like fall fishing? A little bit. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. What do you like about fall fishing? Streamers. That's yeah, the least surprising answer of all time. What do you like about fishing? Fall fishing. Brown trout. Peg eggs, BWOs, and streamers. Those are three good reasons too. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, I like the colors, you know. I like nature. Yeah. Oh, you like to look really up when you're there, fishing. You know? it's quieter. It's, yeah, it's quieter, quieter for sure. You know? It's getting a little chillier. It's getting a little chillier. That is actually yeah. well. We don't feel it right now in the studio. It's quite hot again in the studio, <laughs> yeah. but and it is like 95 right. in Denver today. Yeah, yeah. Like for so like, reason, fall's got to be on the way eventually. You yeah. hope. Mountains have been great. Mountains been good. yeah. Mountains been cool, but got yeah. some snow. Got some snow already. Right. Early early snow. Yeah. Like perfect weather. 65. Yeah. I heard is it gonna be La Nina again this year or some shit? I don't know. I can never Almanac remember is it La Nina, El Nino. A, a big snow year for us. So. Is it he or she? Be prepared. Yeah. Well, anyway. So <laughs> we're gonna talk about fall fishing, October, blue wings, streamers, peg eggs. Olive streamers. Black streamers. And olive streamers. As we've as as uh we're gonna have to go to the tape and have Courtney review <laughs> last uh the last five flies and see what yeah. she's her t- hot take is on. Uh, I think Charlie's our debate is just take. simply over at this yeah. point. I mean, it Charlie needs not be mentioned said, anymore. Yeah. I just feel like that was conveniently dropped to be placed in front of me. I think I it dropped. Look, it was like, how do you feel question. about all of streamers? Clearly, Charlie has strong opinions to the opposite of mine, and you just so happened to make that the summary. So then I was just so happened to send you a text like, "Is there any teeing up going here? Because it feels like a little bit of teeing up." I look at it's just a question, an honest question yeah. that I ask people. We did not expect him to answer <laughs> the way that he did, and I was just like, "This is really going our way." I was, in, I was into it. I was. It like, was a win oh. for us. It was, it was a win for us, for the boys. You know, we yeah. we finally got finally got a win out there. You know, who it run was, the world? Huh? Girls. Yeah, but Olive stinks. So. <laughs> I'll I take don't know. That. I seem to do okay on it, oddly enough. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> then we do. We do have a, a battle that a battle royale that still has to happen. We do. We're it's one round one right three. Uh, yeah. yeah, black against the rubber olive. match. Which if it goes anything like uh, other rubber matches I'm involved in, there'll be like 85 rubber matches. So we look forward to, to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow it ends. Tomorrow it ends. All right, cool. So we're gonna talk about five flies for October. Let's get to it. Oh, before we get to it, I forgot to say. If you have any questions about November fishing, next month we have Eland Stribling Black Steve, at Black Steve Irwin coming in for uh, November. Uh, so if you have any questions about November fishing, drop them in the comments below. As always, the questions that get picked will get a Umpqua prize pack and some rising big nippers. Shout out to those guys. Uh, so drop your comments down below if you have any questions about October fishing. Uh, yeah. Cool. That'll Let's be a good one with you, Lynn. That'll yeah. be good. It'll be funny. Yeah, yeah. We're pumped on that. Also, uh, he's going to be doing some stand-up here on Is the he? 19th. Yeah. All right. So we'll check out yeah. that. I think all the proceeds from that are going to go to uh, DTU. Uh, nice. The Denver South Platte. So, yeah, we're excited. Right. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. DSP getting all kinds of attention over the last few getting weeks. that cash. Yeah, seriously. Uh, yeah. I think it was a new goal right that they met for yeah, carpsley like over 20 yeah, prop, over 20k yeah. shout out to D- dtu fighting for the cause yeah, yeah all right let's get to the flies fly number one is the wolf a classic. classic a classic of classics yeah perhaps one of the most classics very classic yeah what's I'm not a what size are we working with yeah i'm not a historian i believe this is an 18 i'm a historian oh, are you as you know yeah you are that's true <laughs> You went to school for that sort of, yeah? yeah, yeah. Is that what your degree's in? I got, yeah, double bachelor's, American West history and anthropology, baby. So what can you tell Cultural us about anthropology? What exactly so. were you going to do with that degree besides work at a fly shop? Out of this, curiosity? yeah. <laughs> Trained for this. <laughs> so tell me, an old historian, the Ken Burns of this shit, uh, what do you like about the wolf? Blueing olives are coming. PMDs are still lingering around. Um, 
even I would say Trico's and it's just general it's an attractor it's a durable you know it lasts I like flies that last all day that fly can you can catch fish on it over and over before mm -hmm. parts of it start falling apart even if some of it falls apart it's yeah. still a good fly I like that has good visual um, on it too with exactly. the white on top exactly yes so super visual I mean holds up honestly holds up droppers very well too yeah. so a 16 you can get away with holding up heavier bugs you could even do like a that's what an 18 you could drop a a little yeah. small size what, what like rivers and creeks are you fishing this on this fall sir am i fishing yeah secret ones of course <laughs> secrets <laughs> all over you know i like to bounce around so see colorado eagle you know i'd imagine that would work on the arkansas arkansas i think it's uh mm -hmm. blueing olive hatches i'd imagine that worked yes. pretty good yes. what about you courtney let me take over for yvonne here what do you like about the wolf uh i like the visual <laughs> No, I actually agree with you. I think fishing it a little bigger just because of its profile, it can handle a good dropper. And we're still in dropper season. Right. Hopper, dropper, dry dropper. Um, we're kind so, of transitioning a little bit right. or we're headed towards the transition, but it's still kind of prime time that you can get some really good top water right. eats. Yep. Um, and then especially we were talking about it a little few minutes ago with the weather changing, it being a little colder in the mornings, you know, still get the subsurface right. with the dropper. Yep. Um, and it is, like you said, it's big enough to kind of tolerate a decent dropper Absolutely. with a little weight underneath it. And as great. long as you still keep seeing fish like in the bigger rivers, arc, south plot, in front of structure, like if you walk and you see a fish moving around in front of a rock, mm -hmm. that fish is going to probably eat a dry fly or move to your nymph for yeah, as long as it's there, you know? So uh, while they're still out in their little open spots and they're not, you know, podding back up and moving to deep slots, dry dropper is. Not or quite streamer, yet. Getting you know? there, but not Getting yet. There. You know, I, I'm a big fan of streamers like Courtney is, like, uh, like Tanner is. Yeah. You hopper love dropper olive. game, hopper dropper game, like goes into October, mm -hmm. very much so. And uh, you know, our, our boy Zeke loves a good hopper dropper. That man, yeah, he, so he can't <laughs> he can't not fish a hopper dropper, and he'll do it well into October. Right. He loves hopper droppers. Well, like this I love is all not the necessarily a hopper. You can certainly do the same thing you would do uh, dry dropper. Yeah, like dry a dry dropper yeah. rake. So cool. There we go. Fly number Fine. one. The Boom. wolf. Fly number two is the Jig Nation. This is size 16 in blueing olive. Good profile. Is Zach Thurman is the tire? Yeah. yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yep. Good profile. It's, I like the tail. Yep. Super curie. Very curie. Yeah. Maybe a little For good reflection For all the curers out that. there, they probably love this fly. I think the solid Tanner, thing about that fly. What do you like about this fly? I think Courtney has something to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Courtney, the, like the solid thing about that fly is it reminds me, uh, don't forget to fish still water in the fall too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's hang a great still water fly. We were just talking about a dry fly that can hold up droppers. That's a great combo with that, especially, yep. um, especially in your canyons, stuff like that. It will get down in a hurry. Um, so how's that profile? Blooming olives are going to be our main bug yep. at some point if it ever does cool down. And yeah, still, <laughs> still waters, like you said, you will be pretty alone out there if you're fishing, you know, Antero, Spinny, name a few. So why, yeah. why are you going to be alone right now out there? People just kind of sl yeah. sleep on still waters, I think, a little bit, you know. Yeah. September, August can be, like, really slow out there, you know, unless you're in a boat. And those fish move right back in. And, I mean, they're shallow on the shelves. We just fish. And they're prepping I mean, it's, for the freeze. Yeah, it's good. Right. Yeah, it's good. Prepping for the freezer. For the freeze. For the freezer? <laughs> Tara's uh, putting a couple of hey. stickers, huh? Hey. <laughs> yeah, he's been known. <laughs> Been known. What's yeah. wrong with keeping a legally kept uh, fish? Yeah, absolutely nothing. Nothing wrong, wrong with yeah. that. What's your favorite way to cook it, though? Uh, fried or just blackened. Okay, that's yeah. fair. A little yeah. butter, yeah. A little foil. Butter, a little that's salt, a little pepper. Butter's pretty much all I need. You know, yeah. butter makes everything taste little good. Little lemon. Jonathan would up. agree with that because yeah, he's uh, from Alabama. So you spritz, definitely not ketchup though. Yeah. Yeah. Do you spritz uh, citrus on your trout, or what? yeah, or just like actual real lemon. Yeah, yeah, citrus. Yeah. Fruits. Oh, I Lots. thought you meant like the bottle. No. <laughs> yeah. That that bottled lemon juice is not right. It's gross, actually. <laughs> well, I was talking about <laughs> dyeing your hair in yeah. fucking middle school, buddy. Yeah, I was just yeah. talking about seasoning your trouts. <laughs> well, anyway, we were talking about the Jignation. Yeah, it's a good fly. Good fly. Highly right. recommend. So it has that like pertagon shape, uh, like will get down right. So you can mm -hmm. use it on still waters, as we mentioned. You can use it as a Hopper drop on a hopper drop rig, or if you want to like drop, uh, like if you're sight fishing to a picky fish on a like a tailwater, uh, that would be a good fly to get your rig down because 
those Pertagon Euro jig right. flies, they get down right. fast. They do. Right. And it's probably effective. We haven't mentioned on actual Euro nymphing, you know, yeah. just because we don't. Euro nymph, it's probably a yeah. pretty deadly pattern in that game right yeah. now as well. So. I would assume And you so. yeah. are doing a series on Euro nymphing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, John and I just returned from a day nice. in Cheesewood Canyon with old, uh, old Russell Miller, the champion of the carp slam. Yes, he champ. decided to just slum it in uh, Cheeseman Canyon, and uh, we have a video that either is out or will be out shortly. Uh, five tips for your nymphing Cheeseman Canyon, which is pretty good. Russ, good stuff. Russ is a, a a wealth of knowledge. You know, he's actually like a historian. Yeah. Key. Yeah. Like that dude yeah. knows way too many things about things. It's impressive. Like Nothing all things, or like fly fishing things. Yeah. Well, mostly fly fishing for right. sure. Okay. But like. There is students There's, of the fly fishing game sometimes, yeah. and they'll like tell you, and you're like, dude, yeah. sorry. He's one of those dudes. Like, yeah. it's like he knows every rod that Scott's ever made in some shit. That's know? pretty impressive. Pro- maybe he maybe doesn't know that, but I feel like of all the people I know, he probably is most likely. Totally to. fair. So Either shout way, out to the R-Dog. that's impressive. Yeah, shout out to the R Dog. We love you, who you are, Dog. All right, let's get to fly number three. This is when you should be here. This is a Carl Stout pattern inspired by Mark. Angler? Yeah. Duranglers, I believe. Of the? Yeah, of Duranglers fame. Yes. WD-40. Yeah, yeah, WD-40. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Tanner, you picked this out with uh, great aplomb. Is that the correct usage? I don't know. What word did you just use? Aplomb. Aplomb? Yeah. It's perhaps not the right usage, but you picked this out. You're pretty excited about it. Talk to us about why you're excited about the WD-50 for October. Balloonings are coming. It's just a crazy productive pattern on every aspect of fishing in Colorado, you know, works really well in our technical tailwaters. Deckers, those blue wings are coming. Arc, they're coming. Colorado, they're coming. Eagle, they're coming. You know, when we can ever move on from these trichos, um, the blue wings will be there. And that's a, I mean, you can fish it on a nymph rigs. You can fish it as like an emerger, like trailing a dry fly. Dropper. Dropper. Mm-hmm. Versatile, productive, fishy looking. It's just a fishy looking fly. We so. did see some blue wings yeah. in the South Platte yesterday. Yep. They were also uh, hatching with PMDs, which was right. you know, cool. a, a moment. Yeah, a good moment. situation. A to, good a situation moment. to be right. in. It's yeah. not the worst to right. see a lot of bugs. Did you get some footage of it? Yeah. Of the um, moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got a couple, couple footages. That's fair. You know. Were they interbreeding, making like pale morning olives? Dude, that'd be pretty sick. Imagine that. <laughs> Dude, they probably do. Dude, yeah. there's your fly. Yeah. Pale morning. Olive? Seriously, you yeah. should start tying a pale morning olive and name it. It's yours. The WD sixty. <laughs> 67. WD69. <clears throat> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> we, to we went there, huh? Yeah, the WD69. <laughs> oh, yeah. 420 WD69. Yeah. WD42069 just blaze that shit. Yeah. Dude, AIM. Let's go. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so, WD50. <laughs> yeah. When uh, you is, aren't throwing streamers. Yeah. Which is never. Yeah, which is never. <laughs> She's a badass. Right. <laughs> if you had, if you were on a tailwater, and you and had, still throwing like streamers. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Some wrong person to ask, I suppose. You know. Something's wrong with what? Wrong person to ask, I suppose. Yeah, we'll get back to you in two flies, yeah, we'll and I guess. Back, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like uh, Courtney's so seeing herself out. Circle back on that yeah. one. <laughs> circle back. Seeing yourself out. I mean, WD50, you can use year round though, right? You like, can. Yeah. It's a good Absolutely. universal yeah. fly. Yeah. Let's let's be real. You don't just. No. Most of our trout on most of our waters, tailwater or otherwise, are going to eat that fly right. most days of the year. Right. Blue wings are around all the time. Yeah. Yep. Same with midges. And then, like, I think the WD-40 was originally a midge, and this was redesigned to be more like a blue wing olive. Yep. Um, but, I mean, you can interchange, interchange that a lot. Right. So They're great trailers behind streamers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they strip well. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they really emerge, <laughs> as Courtney would say. <laughs> Would I say that? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say it the other, just earlier. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's really emerge, you said. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, brother. This emerges better Jonathan than other Jonathan is emerges. like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've only been a part of three of these, and none have fallen off the rails quicker than this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the question and answer portion. Uh, as always, shout out to Umqua and Rising. Uh, if you have questions for November fishing, Elon's Tribbling's going to be in the house. We're going to answer those questions. Uh, you guys get a prize pack. Every question that gets picked and answered on, this, on the show uh, gets a prize pack. So get those out to you. Uh, let's start with question number one. I believe 
Grizzly Whisperer. Ooh. All right. Grizzly Whisperer asks. Can we ask him a question? He goes, I love this episode. So that was pretty cool, too. Uh, question for October. <laughs> As we move into cooler months, bringing lower temps and water levels, along with crystal clear water, do you have any tips for fighting and landing fish when lighter tip is required on our Colorado tailwaters? I feel like this is right up Tanner's alley. Up mine? Oh, yeah. Um, I think if you're... I'm usually pretty aggressive when I'm landing fish, yeah. so I think the lighter tip, and everyone wants to like let the fish just run and go and like mm -hmm. take their time so much with it. I'm the exact opposite, you know. If that fish is like kind of in a lull, like take get advantage. that fish to the net as quickly as you possibly can on five X because the longer it's out there, it gets in a current, it gets around a rock, like you're losing flies, you're doing stuff like if you're aggressive, the reason you lost that fish is you know, being over aggressive, I guess, and that's to me that I'm okay with that. Like, You'd rather lose your I, lose right, that way than right, lose lose right. when like you don't you give it a little too much slack right. and it runs into right. a rock and right. shaves you off. I just don't want that right. fish below me. You know, like I'm moving to get below it, and then mm -hmm. I'm ho horsing that fish in, and like if it pops or something bad happens, yeah. that's an L I can live with. But I cannot stand watching my fish get into a current and be two runs down, yeah. and you're holding on, and you're surprised when it comes off. Like that is. You yeah. lost, you know, the second that that fish gets down below you a little ways yeah. on light tip it, you're, you're pretty much toast, unfortunately. Yeah. So the other thing is you can push, yeah. you can push six X yeah. a lot more than you think you can. Right. Yeah. Right. You might like, for me, I stink at tying knots in six X, right. but like you can still, if you tie a good knot on six X, right. you can put a lot of pressure. On yeah. That. Fluorocarbon nowadays is so good that right. it's, I mean, five, six X is, is, is strong. You know, do you so. play the rod angle game at all? A little bit. I was just going to say I agree with what I function the same way you right. do. I think all the same rules apply, whether it's light or heavier tippet, right. little nymph or streamer. Keep your rod tip up. Keep manageable tension on it. Right. Like I always tell my clients, like push the butt of your rod towards your fish. Get that head above water right. and get them in the net. Yeah. Right. You can also play the game of like low rod angles too. You can really like bully a fish getting that rod. Sometimes rod. I think I think you definitely you look can. cooler you, too. You, though, yeah. you know, you look so, like a wizard. But I think sometimes people are more focused. It's like when people spend a lot of time right. in the air casting, right? right? Yeah. You're like, hey, the fish live in the right. water, not the air. I think you can spend a lot of unnecessary time that's not good for the fish either. Right. I also agree. Oh, no, I'm fish. saying you can bully a fish yeah. with a low rod angle. Yeah. You can like get them. You in. can turn them. Yeah. But a you lot of times, like you, if you have your rod angled the wrong way, like you're yeah. literally not fighting. Like you're just yeah. like, that fish is just sitting in the current like this, like. And you're like broad is like dipped down right above the fish. Like that fish is you're not yeah. doing you're anything. doing nothing. You're for doing sure. literally yeah. doing for nothing. sure. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you if you're not like moving you're the fish, it and moving right. it a certain right. way, and then it's right back to like straight yeah. up and get its head up. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying you can turn like you can turn that fish's head. Yeah. Right. Like you can shorten a, a fight by moving it out of where like yeah, if, if sure. it's sitting there like happy go lucky in there, you can like. Get that rod angle low, turn it, and move it towards right. you, right? Like yeah, get for it, sure. Get it in towards you a little bit faster. There's definitely some angles, but you right. fished with me enough to know that if you're out here being Darth Maul and you're like lightsaber and yeah. your rod around, like I am. Yeah, I mean, I am going to. You're going like, to judge. What are you, I'm going to yeah. be like, dude, what are you doing, man? You know what I mean? I mean like, rod, you're literally, low just, rod angles you're work. You're literally just looking to. You're yeah. literally just doing that for your own looks. Your low own, low your rod own, angles ooh, work. You know, check out my. Ooh, yeah. ooh. I'm fighting the fish. Yeah, I mean, changing it back right. and forth, that's right. a dangerous game. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. For sure. Get it up. Get right. it where you want it in the soft right. water. Get it up. Right. Get, right. It. get below get it, it. Net it. it. Scoop it. Boom. Yeah. Changing up the angles like over and over, that's going to that's gonna be cause right. more problems than not. And right. you will lose fish, horse and, horse and fish yeah, like that. for sure. You're gonna, but you're going to lose fish letting them just, you, Chill. Know, yeah. you know, people that try to play a fish in Cheeseman Canyon for 10 minutes and they wonder why it got below them in a weird current and got off. It's like, right. hey, like I know you didn't want to like, corral that fish it's a big fish but the yeah. second it's like around a rock and you're like trying to like line throw angle, the uh yeah, throw do, the, do the, some, something the roll cast like, to dry, yeah. you're, you're, oh, yeah. you know your hose so yeah you know make it quick yep make it quick and if yep. it's not quick then yeah. also use like yeah. bigger tipper than you think you need to use right like i guess you can focus on your presentation right. you know try to use 5x if you like if you're naturally inclined to use smaller tippet, try sizing it up and see what see what you can get away with. Because like, okay. I mean, it's not it's not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. You you can mess around with it, but like five X, I feel a lot more confident with five X than I do with six. Oh yeah, you know? agreed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like just a matter of matter of uh, 
matter of confidence when it comes I down to it. I think sometimes as it gets to colder temps and we're downsizing flies, people forget yeah. that you can do four and five X through right. a midge. And right. there are times where the fish right. are still going to eat to your point with presentation. So. Right. Less drag, more dead. That's a good question. Yeah. It is a really good question. Shout out to Grizzly, Grizzly Whisperer. All right. Uh, question number two is from Elliot May. He says, October question. How do you... How do you know the best streamer fishing technique for a given water dead drift versus swing versus downstream retrieve, uh, et cetera. Can that be determined by water type or do you tr just try them all until something works? Courtney as uh, is this because, coming to me because it's streamers. Oh yeah. I feel so boxed. So you were right on now. the Tom Rosenbauer <laughs> podcast. That's true. I was yeah. talking um, about streamers. <laughs> so I think there's a few Our Lord and savior, Tom. That's fair. Yeah. I agree. He's, he's, the, he's a good dude. Yeah. He's the man. He's the man. Yeah. The dude. Um, I think some of this comes down to a few things. I think uh, how I'm approaching and reading water if I'm wading and streamer fishing versus from a uh, boat, right? So how I'm covering the water if I'm stationary or I'm moving. Um, I think a lot of the majority of people are wading, though. So yeah. when I'm looking at that, I'm looking at structure and I'm looking at the setup of the water. I'm reading the water. We have a new education class around reading the water. Shameless plug. Check it out for troutslesterning.com. <laughs> You'll be with Eric Schmidt. He's delightful. He is delightful. A real delight. He is a real delight. Yeah. Very detail oriented. Very good teacher. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if I am waiting and I'm reading the water and I'm looking for where the fish are sitting relative to where I'm standing or waiting or presenting from, that's really what's going to drive. Yeah. Am I standing here and I think the fish are sitting mid river and I'm casting straight across and stripping straight back? Well, I'm not going to let it swing. Am I standing here? And there's a big rock here. It has a big, nice pocket behind it that I think the fish are sitting on. I'm probably going to present 45 downstream, let that swing so that my retrieves are going in and through that pocket. Yeah. Um, versus am I standing here and there's a boulder or something in our structure below me, be it a strainer or whatever, and I think there's fish sitting in front of it, then I may be a downstream. So I think that t genuinely comes down to where I'm standing, where I'm trying to present, where I think the fish are sitting, and which technique gets me through that area. So basically water type. Yeah. Yeah. Water type's dictating what you do. Yeah. yeah, on top of whether I'm waiting or floating, yeah, right? Yeah. Tanner? I think, yeah, I mean, that's basically the same thing I would say. It's, I mean, think about the fly. Like, where is right. the fly? Mm -hmm. You have to have, the, no matter how you're mixing it up, you have to have the fly in the zone, like Courtney said, for the longest amount of time, you know what I mean? Yep. So if you see fish that are, like, kind of laying here stripping straight through them like sideways whether it's probably not how any sort of natural bait is ever gonna right. look yeah. ever in the history of ever so you're looking for just like a sporadic like grab at that he is a historian he's back to that history but thing he's a historian <laughs> yeah. so but like if you see them all in a line like what you said like and your fly is swimming down through them like yeah. on a regular basis or like swimming kind of back through them yeah. or you know taking its time in the feed zone like yeah. you're gonna just entice way more strength so yeah i'm basically trying to think about how my fly is especially if you can see fish see structure yeah. see where it's dead like if you know where the fish are just like your nymphing you want your streamer to be where the fish are you know mm -hmm. so the more what's the most natural presentation right. for where they're sitting right. what's the more yeah what's the more more ways you can have it in that feed zone yeah. and be creating action to get that irritation strike essentially i'd also mention like water temp probably plays yeah. a role True. So like for sure how True. willing is a fish to move how based far. on how cold it is and how far are they going to move how far away from their like ambush spot is it going to mm -hmm. are you presenting the fly and like that plays a role i think from my perspective it's like a sort of mix and match yeah. right uh, like totally. like if you're not like we all probably start with our preferred way of catching them like this is how we're going to present it like this, I'm going to present it upstream, bring it back. It's going to be aggressive strips. But if you're not getting that feedback, like start changing it up mm -hmm. and start mixing it up. Like throw the dead drift, th swing it out, like do all those things. And eventually as the day goes on, you'll start putting those puzzle pieces together and you'll start getting that feedback where it's like cool. Like in this dead kind of flat water, if I dead drift it, mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of response versus like if I'm, going through a riffly section, I need to rip it fast. Yep. And so like it can be day to day, it right. changes. And uh, I don't think there's one best answer, right? Mm -hmm. Like we all have our Reading preferences, but like it's, it's, uh, it's dynamic. And I think that's mm -hmm. why we all enjoy streamer fishing is like, right. you're trying 100%. to figure out how to present the fly to make it look like a fish 
There's more that skill they to it than sometimes given right. credit. Right. Step one is just simply identifying where fish are. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you can, Versus if you're fishing where a streamer you are. to where a fish isn't, and it doesn't matter if you're, you're not going to catch them, huh? You're not going to catch them. <laughs> Damn. And I think that's one of the most underrated aspects of all of fishing. Like if we're sh- struggling with fishing, yeah. we never think that it's we're doing something wrong, you know? Never my fault. Right. It's never yeah. me. You know, yeah. I say that a ton, you know? It's like if I'm not catching fish, chances are it's not, has nothing to do with anything other than like me. Right. You know? Hundred percent. I own that. I'll own that and like yeah. change things up. You know. Right. So yeah. just because a fish was there a month ago does not mean that that same fish is going to be anywhere near there. Right. You want him to come be October. Yeah, but he might not be. It's a good another question. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's Where do they go? <laughs> Are Bonita fish big, Jake? Right. Mm-hmm. The uh, <laughs> question is old as time, Jake. Oh, did he <laughs> did he ask it here? Oh yeah, yeah he, did. he did. Of course he did. Jake, we're not answering that question. Dumb question. Try next, you know, next month. Better but. luck next month, Jake. Yeah, better luck next month, Jake. <laughs> you bum. Uh, last question from Blake Parsons. Now, this is a lengthy question, so we're gonna. I don't know if we have time to answer all of this together, but we're gonna we're gonna try try our best. Blake asks, uh, "I'm not very confident with nymphing and catch far fewer fish." Compared with, with dry dropper rigs, I think my problem is obtaining a correct drift. What are your keys to a good drift? Do you prefer to use weighted flies? What are your strategies for using weight? How do you set up your flies for two or three fly nymph rigs? Uh, what are keys to indicator adjustments? And he says, definitely Cholula. You guys need to try uh, Marie Sharps from Belize. So, do you, so you like Marie Sharps? I do like Marie Sharps. No, Marie Sharps and in fire. Belize, it Have tastes better. It? Loser. Have you ever had it in Belize? Yeah, bro. No. You haven't had it in. I've had like Tapatio, Chalua, <laughs> and like, shoot. You should basic. seek out Valentina, Marie dude. Valentina. Valentina, yeah. Taco Bell hot sauce. Yeah. That shit's good. What, what's your Taco Bell hot sauce? Diablo. Damn. Just saying. That's why this man runs into so much, so much trouble. You know, he's just asking for it. Diablo. What a, what a wild man. Anyways. Back to nymphing. Back to nymphing. <laughs> So you give us uh, your general approach. Like, what do okay. you, how do you, how do you go about it? Yeah. Because I think that's the general question. For sure. So I am a three fly nymph rigger. Yep. I think is what we're now officially calling it. Put it on a shirt. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, he said in there that he's not as confident in nymphing as he is dry dropper fishing. And I think some of that is have some more confidence because you are nymph fishing to some degree when you're a dry dropper, hopper, dropper fishing. Right. You're good um, enough. You're strong enough. Absolutely. And gosh darn it, people like you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How to win friends and influence others. You guys remember that SNL? Yeah, no. I do, oh, actually. Um, remember <laughs> Loser. Your indicator now is just not duly functional like your hopper or your dry is, yeah. right? Unless, to your point, you're on the blue and right. the trout's just a little confused. Right. Um, the key for me is it's depth. Pellet time, baby. <laughs> what was that? It's pellet time, baby. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the key to me for me is depth, right? So they say the difference between a good nymph fisher and a great nymph fisher is a little weight. Yep. So yep. I it's like one or two split shot. Two one or two split shot. Yep. yep. And I tend to always start heavier, and I will take weight off, <laughs> um, yes. or lose my flies. Right. Yep. Um, and then when I'm watching the indicator, when we're talking about presentation, so that I know those nymphs are where I want them and in a good flow and a good drift, I'm looking at the indicator to make sure a it's smooth and b it's moving just a little slower than the speed of the current. Yeah. If I'm moving just a little slower than the speed of the current, it means I have enough weight on and I'm getting down deep and they're getting in the zone long enough, like we were talking about earlier with the streamers, right, to actually get eaten. Um, as far as actually rigging, um, I just do, well, to the eye on the first one, obviously, and then bend to eye personally. Yep. So I don't remember what other portions of that question the, uh, there may have been. That was a hot, there was a, a moment in time when we had Russ in here a couple months ago and there was a bit of a debate there. If, About you're an the, eye, if you rig eye to eye. Interesting. You're, yeah. an, you're a be, eye to bend. Like, I, I mean, I'm a I bend do, to eye. Yeah, yeah, bend to eye. I do the same thing, but we're apparently, that's apparently old people stuff now. Like all oh. the youngsters are doing eye to eye. Right. Okay, fair so enough. So that's cool. we're over I'm, the hill. I'm almost forty, so that's fair. Damn. Yeah. Same here. Same right. Z's, bro. Not me. I think. I mean, you're based on the other thing that I think um, I typically stress to people is just to think about when you set up your rig they are never hanging vertical. Everyone, I think, automatically, yeah. especially when we're first fly fishing, think, oh, my flies are traveling through the water this way. They're always typically traveling this. Of course, the, it seems logical. So if the water's flowing this way. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The so, indicators here. Uh, yeah. Flies are back there. Yep. Yeah. So um, the thing closest to the weight's going to sink the most. The thing furthest from the weight's going to float up, and they're typically always at some kind of angle. You're not typically hanging some kind of straight down or straight up. Um, so that's where I think people get a little bit sometimes nervous about weight because they're like, I'm just going to hit the bottom and I'm going to rip oh. off. But keep in mind right. that where your flies are actually positioned, they're not all sitting typically no. on the bottom. They're not sitting in a straight line. There is an angle to them as they're moving through the water. So you want to get them down. Yeah. And generally, like if you're dry dropping, you're not getting that nymph down all the way down. No. Right. It's, so yeah. the way any river like profile looks from the side, like mm -hmm. it's going to be like fastest right here not quite as fast right at the surface yep. and then slower because the friction the and all bottom. that stuff at the bottom so like yeah you're like you said the i think that's a good point is like the indicator should move slower than the current slightly slower than the current whereas like if you're fishing dry dropper mm -hmm. that dry drop you, you want that dry to be like moving with yeah. moving with the current so that i think that's probably one really good point for blake is like focus on the speed of that indicator I think the third little tip I give people is whatever's happening to that indicator is happening to the flies under the water. It's super yep. simple, but if you see drag around the indicator, your flies have drag on them. Yep. It's not a natural drift. If your indicator, like I said, is moving smooth, a little slower, your flies are in a good position and they're, yep. it's a good drift. Yeah. And you want to hit bottom like yeah. every Bounce five to 10 casts, right? Bit, you want, right? you want it down. You, you want that, those flies down there. That's unless you're fishing to a suspended fish, those fish are going to be in and around the bottom. That's where it's the easiest for them to hang out. Yep. Right. So especially as we get into colder temperatures. Yep. Tanner thoughts. I think you're also somewhat attacking different water when you're dry dropper fishing, right. as you are when you're nymphing, you know, Yeah. then that's probably essentially why you're worried about the weight and all that stuff. You're probably fishing shallow pocket, quick pocket water, you know, so yep. you want to get in quick hits. You're not doing that with nymphs. Like you can't fish as good as this little soft edge around a rock looks if the hole's only this big and you have yep. an indicator and nine foot leader and three nymphs down below there with weight on, like you are not fishing that. Like you, yeah. you just have to accept that. Um, and what you are going to do is fish. Acceptance yeah. is the first key. Yeah. Fish those great runs. And I think you guys made a great point. Your nymphs are moving differently. I think that when you slow your nymphs down and you, the only way to slow drifts down is weight, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. So if your flies and are going too management. fast and a little, little bit of line right. management, but the natural thing that's going to slow down is weight because it's going to get it into yep. those different levels. Yep. And I think when you are slowing that drift down, your flies might not be perfectly aligned, but they're way more aligned, yep. you know, um, that's what's getting them down. Maybe have a nymph at the bottom, but when you, you see the indicator cruising, you're right. Like that, that bottom nymph is way up here. It's like three inches underwater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be your technical midge that's getting down at the bottom. Right. Um, so yeah, adding weight slows it down and does get them more in a line. And you're yeah. again, just like we just said with the streamers, you're more in that feed zone for a longer yeah. amount of time. What's your, um, cause I do think key. this was part of his question. And I think this is a commonly asked thing. That's good info. What's your approach to what you adjust first, second, third when you're nymph fishing so you feel like you're in the right zone it's still just not working you're assured that there's got to be a fish down there right yeah. so what are what's your lineup of priority of adjustments to your rig wait then wait again <laughs> then maybe wait again and then probably gonna move my indicator up or down yeah you know, really? it's probably gonna be again i mean do you I, go do you go uh when you're setting up your three two or three fly rig do you go big heavy fly small fly or do you go small fly big heavy fly i go yeah, big to small, just because yeah. it's mm -hmm. just like your taper leader. It's just easier to roll over, you know? Yep. It makes yeah. sense. You can argue that it makes sense doing the opposite, and I will be like, yeah, that's... Cast you're, it. you're right, you know what I mean? But having a size what 20... What do you have confidence having, in? Yeah, having a size 20 above a pat's rubber leg is going to, for me, just... I'll be like, oh my God, like, yeah. I can't do this with the weight above the RS2 or something. Like, yeah. I don't I don't understand how that's supposed to look. So, right. yeah, like, that's... You got to sort of think cast, in 3D. Cast, cast smoothly, yeah. so... You got to think about, like, I think the thing with nymph fishing is you got to think more in 3d than you do with dry yeah. fly fishing right like you're just sort of reading the top current and like sort of looking at the, the features below when you're fishing dries but now you're really fishing, getting into water yeah. columns and right. then depending right. on how many flies you have on that rig where does each one live does this bug you yeah. know does this primary bug that we're getting towards the bottom does it swim right <laughs> or does it right. chill right right you know so it needs to be right. on the bottom versus just above the right. bottom right yeah, for sure. And that, I, I think the, all, the other thing is like what, where in the, your drift do you expect to catch fish, right? Yep. So like your flies, you plunk your flies down. Those things are sinking down. That's like not very natural. Right. Right. So you want to make sure you're prepping for that. So you're getting your flies down early and then you're drifting it through right. this. So by the time you get to the fish, the flies are distance there. Distance section, right? right? Where you yeah. want your flies to be down by this right. section. And that's really your effective drift. Right. right. 
that portion of the yep. of your your drift is where you're going to catch the fish more more likely than not That's and then yeah like you might swing one out and get right. lucky on the right. backside, but like because it's you need to fish that drift that's right? a great hey, that's a great point you know very rarely just like anything are you gonna is a fish gonna eat the fly on its yeah. like on its way down so it needs to reach that level and slow yeah. down you know every yeah. once in a while fish some current your big pats rubber leg or something yeah. will get smashed like right when it yeah drops for sure down and it'll shoot upstream yeah but, if you're throwing yeah, an indicator rig, you're trying to dead drift. Right. I don't think my flies are going to get eaten the whole drift. It's going to get eaten. Right. At What's your um, take on your hot take? Take on, hot. Because I feel like sometimes this can be like a Colorado versus Swing Wyoming, Colorado versus Montana thing. Mm. Um, Let's the get dead the war drift. going. Yeah. Like how much line, because you spoke to line management a little bit earlier. Um, and I think there can be a little bit of polarized opinions on you know, how much lines on the water versus not necessarily being tight to your indicator, but no. maybe being a little more direct versus a little spaghetti for the dead drift. What's your hot take on that? I think the more spaghetti it is, the more line you have on the water, as long as that's moving dead, the slower your drift's going to be. Yeah. I think you'll probably miss more because you won't be tight to your flies. But if there's line on the water and it's moving slow too, like, yeah. I think a lot of people try to be so tight all the time. They're just like ultimately Dragging. creating drag that mm -hmm. they don't need to. But yeah. both can be effective. That's just me. Like I, I think it probably depends. I have also no problem like, with like the over the head, like, yeah. oh, you know, like picking out 40 feet of line yeah. when I'm fishing. The through. hero set? Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be like, that was a need, I promise. Yeah. And they're like, no. I got one, I got one, I got one. Yeah. Bottom. But, yeah. yeah. Bottom, probably. But yeah, <laughs> I, I like, stick. <laughs> like if, if I'm close and I can like control it with my rod tip, yeah. I'm going to have as least amount of line. But if I'm like drifting a line, I have no problem having like one big mid yeah. and then another mid behind that. And like yeah. you'll small mend the line before and then throw. I just hate throwing huge mins. Like that yeah. is my thing. I'm a micro mender. Like people that throw big mins, like you... It's so much easier to just do yeah. this at like every every foot foot well, and a half so and be like. Every time you, you throw those, right. no, I shouldn't say every time. A lot of times when you throw those big mins, you're resetting your right. flies. Exactly, so. exactly. And, and I think so that's, you yeah. just got the drift set up, right. and then you throw this big min, and all of a sudden your yeah. flies pull up, right. and they have to settle back down, and it happens right. to be right where the fish actually right. is. Right. Right. right, 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 for sure. Also, I think that sort of depends on like how close to yourself are you fishing, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. Like, like he's like Tanner sort of said, like. If you're fishing close, like yeah, small men's are gonna be the key to victory. Like if you're trying to if you're trying to do the hero stuff, yeah, you know, throw all the weird men's right. Just try to you know, you're just trying to make something happen. You're trying to manufacture some runs, right. you know? And that's what we all wanna do. Right. Like you gotta go you gotta try the the dumb stuff. More line is more fun. Right. More line is more fun. There Not as effective, but line more, of the five more fun. flies. <laughs> more line is more fun. It's Hashtag. True. Tangles, it's a it can be a disaster, yeah. but it can also be great. Uh, so I hope we uh, answered your question, Blake, uh, well enough. Uh, if you have, have more questions, yeah, and that's the you have only any thing more questions, really ultimately boils down to confidence and technique yeah. that's, approach. That's the confidence and technique, yeah. That's my. I know a lot of confident people who stink, that, myself included. You're not confident when you fish. The two places everybody needs to know where Yvonne isn't confident when he's fishing with me, and I'm in his ear, and that's the tee box with a driver. Damn. <laughs> I didn't but know sometimes where he was though, going with that. So, yeah, I know. I was a little worried, to be honest. If I'm being honest, <laughs> two places. I'm being honest. Yeah, the is other places any, I don't look, know. Those are the only places I can speak of. I think we'll leave it at that. All right. So uh, there and we dude, go. The question answer like portion. Three fifty. You know. Like, there we go. Question oh. answer portion. You know. Uh, back to the flies. Back to the flies. Let's do it. So appreciate everyone. And I'm, yeah, dude, I mean, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty here. You know, talk about my confidence. I oh, do. I'm so confident, bro. You don't get in my head. You know, that's a losing game for me. You know? It means I'm already there. Right. That's Occupying space. For you, Rent for free. you Jonathan. Rent free. All right. We're going to get to flies four and five. Just a little bit more for me. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fly number four is Antonio Rodriguez's emerger. Antonio's uh, emerger. Blue wing olive. This is size 19 because Antonio is a Euro guy, so... They use some cool hooks. That's you cool. Know? Oh, yeah. Cool Tanner. Hooks, cool sizing. Right. Tanner. Antonio's a merger. Also has a, he also has just like the regular right. dry, which is quite good as well. I think that's one of the most slept on flies in Colorado. Absolutely. Um, we always, we all have confidence in Dorsey flies, Mayor flies, Craven flies. Yep. That fly, that fly just works. Those yeah. two I mean, flies for sure. Right. Right. Those oh, yeah. two flies. It just, they just work. Like you look yeah. at it and you're like, oh. 
Yeah. You know, and it's like sometimes like it'll be next in like a bin next to like a Juju Betis or a, you know, Mercury Betis, yeah. which are, I mean, though, you need those flies too. Right. And they'll be like, eh. and I'm like, yo, man. Right. Fish have seen in this state, have yeah. seen Juju Betis and Mercury Betis. I'm sorry to say that, but they have not seen that as much. And right. sometimes that little difference can matter, especially yeah. when it's a fishy ass fly. So oh, yeah. that needs to be up there. I think, I think it's a fishy ass yeah. fly. Yeah. It needs to be up there. It's, it does everything you want. It covers you when you throw crappy drifts with some action and yep. natural emerging states. Yep. And, you know, yeah. I agree. Mending, you know, it's just like great. High Swing, swings it out. Yep. High vis yeah. is nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, I agree. Like, you know, I think, uh, it's a good fly. There's a lot of love for Pertigons and Euroflies, right? Those right. Are yeah. some, right. They, they've been accepted quite quickly. This right. is a non-traditional, right. like more European style dry fly slash emerger. Right. And I mean, yeah, it doesn't look like the other flies we're used to. That doesn't mean it doesn't catch right. the hell out of fish. Right. Agreed. You know, it's the first thing that Russ Miller reaches for when there's blue wings, blue wings right. hatching. That dude right. catches fish. He's the carp slam champion. Right. Did we mention that already? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that's, it's up there. Yeah. You know? Do you, when do you like to fish emergers? Always. Uh, sick, sick, I believe sick. that's a lie because you only fish streamers. Yeah, yeah. Be, but she likes, not streamers. But she likes <laughs> fishing those behind Junkie. streamers, bro. I like them as a trailer behind yeah. my streamer. They strip well. Yeah. Yeah. That's what are, we decided. Are you distracted by that at all today? You know, I have actually yeah. looked at it like three or four times. Yeah, yeah. I love those. Swimming. I really want one in like my office and my house. I wish it was a fan. It's almost like calming, you know? It is. To watch. It's a little bit mesmerizing, a little bit calming. Yeah, people can't see it real well on the on the, the YouTubes, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Just trust us. And the sound. Yeah, do you uh, are you like would like do you like throwing emergers behind dry flies? Like, what's your general approach with emergers? Yeah, I'll throw them behind dries. I'll throw them on the bottom of my nymph rig too. Yeah. I mean, typically when I'm not streamer fishing, because it does happen. Rarely. Yeah. Might be rare. Sometimes it's more often. Depends where I'm fishing. Junky. I will have a emerger on my the drug. My the rig. The drug. Bro. The tug is the drug. Oh yeah, bro. As is the strike and the bump and the flash. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sick. But yeah. Um. Any other type of rig, I do typically have an emerger included. Yeah. So it's a versatile fly. Like you can throw the. Right. You can drown this you can mm -hmm. throw this like in the film right like yeah. you can sort of throw it as like a uh like just trying to crest right. through mm -hmm. break through that uh water surface so i think antonio's emerger we we have talked fire. about versatility now for like 47 months in a row like yeah have flies in your box that are versatile yep you know that's one Take of them away. that is one of them that is for yeah. sure one of them yeah cool so there's fly number four let's get to fly number five Oh, man. Fly number Ooh. five. I picked uh, the double dirty hippie. Charlie's not here, but, you know, he, is he lives in our, on in our memory. <laughs> Shout out to the Crave Dog. Crave uh, dog. He's, he's the man. Crave he is, is the man. He's like one of the cooler people. You know, he is. That you could yeah, talk about fishing with for sure. For sure. It was a good time last month. Uh, we wanted to talk streamers with Courtney, though. Right. Court dog, this has some olive in it. There is it some does. olive in there. Does this count as olive or no? No. <laughs> Jeez Louise. That's, That's why we like it. it. Yeah, I love it because it's got white in it. It's not black. So well, yeah, I like, cool. I like other colors. I just don't like all olive, bro. I just can't do all olive. I don't know, man. Seems to do okay for me. Yeah, but you're the... Hey, we're going to Montana in yeah. two weeks. That's Should true. I only fish olive up there? Yes, absolutely. Don't ruin our trip like that, man. We've that would be pretty funny. That'd be no, horrible. No, it's, uh, it's pretty productive up there. I, I just wouldn't catch He's going to be leaving Montana, fish Wyoming, on the table. Idaho, Colorado, I wouldn't catch New any Mexico, fish, though. Utah, yeah. He's going to be Arizona. leaving fish on the table. We have to make... We're trying to make Dude, a cool video. Dude, he has the confidence behind it. I wouldn't catch... He I'd go to Montana and get skunked. Yeah. Olive sucks. <laughs> Charlie said so. <laughs> Always fish olive. Yeah. You know, the other day, olive, uh, white, black. When I was fishing with, when we were fishing with Russ, Russ was uh, jigging streamers and he goes, he's trying to catch them on, on black and he didn't catch them. He goes, man, I might have to do it. I might have to switch to olive. And guess what? He didn't catch them. <laughs> 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 and then, <laughs> and then later when the sun was going down a little bit, he started jigging streamers again. He started smoking them. And I was like, are you catching them on olive? He goes, nope. <laughs> Here's the deal. I mean, Olive I feel like your grave's getting dug. Consistently every time for me, so I just don't feel like it's the fly. Uh, ooh. All right, fair. So it's you. I just feel like it's not the fly. If it's not working for you, it works just fine for me. Yeah, fair enough. 
But I also have success on white and I have success on black. So all is just my favorite. That's fair. Fair. It's fair. Look, I think we can agree to disagree in that regard. That was a very political answer. You know, maybe it isn't for you, Yvonne. You're not, maybe you're right, Courtney. It's okay. I'm still going to dump on it. It's okay. As, you know, try to Sean it. Kemp dunk on this fool. I can completely take it. Keep bringing it. <laughs> exactly. I think you should make You should a goal include that, that clip in oh, a video on an all of yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it's <laughs> Sean Kemp just the double boom, guns. boom, boom. It's like, is that Chris Gatling yeah. out there? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All streamer. streamer, baby. He's got faced. Yeah. That was the best dunk of all time. It really is. Uh, so this is d- Double Dirty Hippie. Yeah. It's all Marabou, right? Marabou, it's got some of this dubbing stuff. I'm not flash. much of a, not much of a mm-hmm. fly tying materials guy, but it's got the flash. Tanner, why do you like throwing the Double Dirty Hippie? I like that fly. I'm going to, maybe I like it in October. That's not my favorite fly to like strip though. Yeah. That is, for me, Anytime I go to like a big Western river and there's those classic wide runs, like that is that exact fly is what I have on first. Like that yeah. is my search swing fly. That is my confidence fly. That fly gets absolutely tagged. Yeah. It'll like lose its eyes and you're like, ah, it's not going to work. It's not going to yeah. work anymore. Yeah. And you're like, wow, these fish probably don't really actually care about that eye. Yeah. And they'll have like one eye and it's like, it can, maybe that gets the them going a little more Half the stuff off the body. will get, chewed up and you're like there it won't keep eating it's got a few know? strands of marabou left it's, it's, like, still, it's, gonna, it's still, works. still gonna swim unbelievable profile one of yeah. the best i think when you swim it in said tank or you sw- like see how it's actually yeah. when it's swinging that is the movement's really good that is yeah. a, the, one of the best moving flies naturally that and the way it moves water not super sparse too right right super it's sparse there's not a ton of materials yeah. to it right like yeah Heavy, it, it's heavy. It's got that lead yeah. wrap at the head, so like that fly is getting down. What about know, the so. double articulated? Is that your preference? I like articulation. I, th- I mean, I think anyone who really likes streamers just naturally gravitates towards yeah. articulated flies for whatever reason. Like we all have. I really like some one hook flies, like the Crelex, but that's I don't swing the Crelex. Like I like. Yeah cheat with the Crelex, you know, <laughs> like fish just react with, to that thing because it's like the fakest thing that could right, ever, it looks like a spoon. It's the fakest thing a fish yeah. could ever eat. Like that fly actually, like when you catch a fish, you're like, I think that fish was like actually yeah. hunting, you uh, know, like it, it ate my fly because it was another fish, you know, right. and, and that, yeah, I mean, and that's awesome. And as a streamer fisherman, like I said, there are a few flies like, and I will, if I'm not, if it's not articulated, I'm always fishing too, yeah. which yeah. like to make up for that in my head for whatever reason, I'm like, well, my streamer's not articulated, but <laughs> But I have a it's trailer. Art- it's articulated like that. That second fly, though, that thing is really moving. And then the first, <laughs> the first fly is the only one that's getting eaten, you yeah. know, but it's, it's still there. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, they're just eating, eating the head. So, yeah, I mean, I love articulated flies. Way better action, I think. Yeah. Unless you're super This guy's just ranting about <laughs> just like, <laughs> just going. Sorry, Go sorry, off, sorry. young He's king. Glowing. Yeah. Flashy. Do you like articulated <laughs> flies, Courtney? Sorry. I do. Sorry. Well, take a break, man. You get a drink, bud. Yeah. I do like articulated hey, flies. Hey, John, this no. cheers is for you. No. Cheers. Why do you like articulated flies? Same reasons, kind of? Do, um, do you want five minutes to go off about articulation? Sorry. No, you're okay. You're passionate about no. it. It's good to have passion. It's yeah. confidence. It's yeah. true. Right? right? Variation in your box and confidence in your flies. Right. Takeaways from five flies always. Yep. Yep. Um, I do like articulated. I like the presentation. I like the movement. I like the flow. I like the way they move through the water and they move the water. Um, I do. I just think it looks more natural. Right. Same thing. I do. I literally what you said, like Crelex wise stuff. I'll fish the heck out of them, yeah. especially on a dirty day on the Colorado right. or something. And I'll still a success. It's a different presentation, right. a different thought process when yeah. I'm on those versus some kind of articulated rusty trombone. Um, Not your yeah. favorite fly or anything. No. No. Olive. Flashy streamers prove how stupid fish are. Yep. Catching fish on that streamer prove how smart you are as an angler. Oh, is Damn. that what it is? This is uh, Pinky's like, Up. This is yeah. a Pinky's Up stream. Like, <laughs> this is that meme cheers. of uh, Winnie the Pooh when he like, it's, it's just true. normal Winnie the Pooh and then he's dressed up in the tuxedo. This is tuxedo Winnie right. the Pooh. Right. It's All true. right. Yeah. It's a good fly though. Yeah. Period. It's John a good Moore streamer. John Moore catches fish on flashy flies. Damn. <laughs> It's a good streamer, olive, Damn. not olive combo. It's just a solid go-to. Looks like a rainbow trout. Those are cool. Yep. Brown Great trout, time brown this trout that eat year. rainbow trout. That's pretty cool in my book. Yep. I think all trout eat rainbow trout. Yeah, I know, but when brown trout eat it, I like it better. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. A rainbow trout eating another rainbow trout can be pretty, pretty intense. 
For sure. Brown trout eat aggressively, but like there's nothing better than a big rainbow eating a streamer. Like those fish will like they eat at your feet. You know what's really great it's about like, no, five like flies? The eats, the eats are dumb rainbow eats are pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty but, good. You know what's the prize? Bonus fly. Oh, oh, yeah. Beads. Bro, you have to swallow those. Damn. <laughs> you know it'd be better if those were frozen to cool it off. Don't swallow those. I'm not gonna swallow that. That'd be a horrible idea, my <laughs> guy. Dude, Fucking you would do it. <laughs> oh, Bro, you eat aspirin. That's an aspirin that doesn't break down. I didn't think it was gonna hit. It only go to aspirin. I didn't know. There was yeah. Yeah, that was a path I wasn't expecting. Beads. <laughs> Tanner insisted that we talk about beads, the most fly of all flies, the most fly beads. Of all flies. Tanner, you picked out, there's like a light orange, there's orange, there's roe, there's like organ cheese, there's uh, the fluorescent green, uh, you got a, like the pale variety, eggs. <laughs> Talk about them. Talk about them pegs. Let's Peg own up eggs. to peg. You guys want me to go on a rant? Like, Let's are, go. Are you ready for this? Look, we got a are couple you more minutes. You got eight minutes to rant. Are you? Um, Let's time them. <laughs> beads are hilarious. Like, <laughs> maybe one of the funnest ways and most like, I can't believe I'm fishing this way is a fishing of all time, right? Like we try to match the hatch with every other bug in the river. Have mm -hmm. you ever tried to match a hatch with a bead? Like you'll put a row on and like you'll get three and then you'll put like a different color on get a couple more and you're like man they're just really probably eating just about any bead and then you put like a how stupid of a color can i get away with and you're like let's check out the chartreuse yeah. and they'll be like oh my god like what about the white bead the white, white bead, bead the clear bead yep. yeah it's it's unbelievable like we all like fishing beads is funny it's something that we all do everyone will tell you that they don't do it or have some opinion about eggs or have some opinion about beads. If you're fishing a yarn egg, you're wasting money on tying a yarn egg. You're wasting money on the whole aspect of like having to change flies all the time. The only time you're losing your bead is when a fish breaks it off. Are you and, smacking on some rocks? Are you smacking on some rocks yeah. and it just like cracks off or something yep. like that? But you have to have, as we move into winter and we move into things like that, you have to have beads. Like there's just places where every fish in the river is eating an yeah. egg you know the what's your approach um to pegging is it bear hook underneath or fly underneath there's again this is going to go back to the debate that there's always those people that have, they're like i had a zebra midge below my yeah. bead i had a i had a, a red hook like oh it's a red midge it's like like if you hooked it right here it had no care about that hook or whatever that hook was like if you have a leech below it and it's like perfect corner pocket it ate the bead like it yeah. ate the bead that's there's no explanation about it other than the fact that it yep. ate the bead yep. and like the best place i don't like are you a rapper do you uh put an actual peg in I, there i rap i yeah. generally rap i think the biggest debate is i just don't think fish some of our technical tail waters i do think fish eat beads sometimes I'm utilizing the bead on like our free zones. Like yeah. I think that is cause that's where like, it's just like a natural, like if there's brown trout on reds, I'm not fishing reds or right. just railing over reds. You're fishing. Glad you made that point. <laughs> you're fishing the whole river because if you're at the Colorado river and there's 5,000 fish per mile and 4,000 of them are brown trout and those fish are all, that means all of those fish are spawning, not at the same time, but in yeah. different periods of time. So the fish that aren't spawning, there's, you think they're eating, there's nothing else in the river besides midges and eggs and maybe some betas. Like they it's are, a lot of protein. They are the eating. Egg. They are eating eggs and yep. like they are hammering on those. Yep. Just so. fish right. the bead. Right, yep. fish the bead and laugh and enjoy it and don't like think you're the coolest guy in the world because you caught twelve fish on beads or the coolest girl in the world because you. But also don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of it too much. Like, yeah. Laugh like huh. when you see a rainbow trout fly out of the water Live, like a laugh, chartreuse bead love. Like hitting itself the bead. in the head like that is the funniest thing that could ever happen in fly fishing it's better than a San Juan worm it's like come on man you can follow right. Tanner at San Juan and Eggs right. on Instagram right. bacon and eggs that is, it's hilarious I don't disagree look you've <laughs> only gotten like four minutes in I was expecting a little bit more it's, the, it's hilarious okay <laughs> R wind that thing up okay Courtney why do you like beads <laughs> Um, because it's hilarious. Because it's hilarious. It because is. everybody fishes them. No, yeah. well, I shouldn't say I. It's a guilt-free zone, it's guys. Just, I, I don't show feel. of hands who fishes beads at this table. John has two hands up. By the and way, all the people that will tell you not to fish beads are guides who 
fish beads make money off fishing beads that is just in the west that is a scientific how do you feel about the brown bead Mm -hmm. i I, see that's where i I don't fish a ton of those fisheries like are you you uh do you nail polish your beads the lower blue and stuff like that i I avoid those places do you nail polish your beads no i just fish i do like i just carry a puck with me though i store all mine in a puck sounds great it's always it's always a little bit of a joy when you (laughs) hear that little puck in your your pack you're like (laughs) (laughs) oh oops (laughs) what's Um, gonna happen now but i definitely carry a puck of them and i have all the colors like you said including white and clear right to be honest or with a little hot spot on right um there's no shame in them to me no you know when i lived in montana and uh fished on the missouri they would often in the spring fish uh pink scuds and in the fall they would fish orange scuds and they said oh we're not fishing it we we're above fishing eggs and i love those guys up there they're great people but they're lying to themselves and then when they're on the they're, boat to, and then when they're on the boat together they're fishing beads like they were fishing they were fishing eggs absolute fact they like, were fishing eggs eggs are protein fish like protein right. They want to eat. How many people do you know in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana? How many do you know? How many do I know? Yeah. They'll be like. Quite a few. Oh. Eggs. And they'll be like, you'll go up and it'll just be like a buddy date. And they'll be like, we're going to pay some beads today. And you're like, wrong. Okay. Yeah. Like rock and roll. Don't ask me twice. Yeah. Whoa. You know, like, ooh, let's keep this mysterious thing. Why do you think. When every, like, everybody. Since we're on this rant historian over there so we got like a good five minutes out of this guy the pain of beads why do you think they've become so controversial i don't know i always well because it's fly fishing it's technically not like a fly fly. i grew up up here and like i've always heard that peg beads started at the taylor the taylor reservoir like that historian that kind of he is a historian i don't know if it's true or not but you got to give credit that would kind of make sense right and we always justified it like when we'd be there when I was like growing up and stuff, you're young kids. It's like if you're fishing in January below Taylor Park Reservoir and it's negative 15 degrees, who cares what the fish are eating? Like you just like, and if they're eating beads, just catch like, them, please. Yeah, you deserve to like you deserve to catch them. Right. And like that's how I was raised, and I was just like, if I'm yeah. gonna freeze, it's just always been part I'm of not your repertoire. Freeze out here and worry about like my frozen size 22. <laughs> rs2 like going yeah. through there and like every time you lift it out of the water it just like has like a little weird white ball of kind of frozenness around it and you're drifting and you're just like watching it kind of float you're like man this is weird but then you put like a <laughs> chartreuse bead that's like doesn't freeze cuts through water and fish are just like swimming over to eating it you're like yeah. <laughs> protein yeah. Let, let's uh i want to make so, this clear though as we uh talk about beads eggs suck, though, otherwise. uh fishing. we're not t- we're no, this is not a, a endorsement of fishing reds no. This is not an endorsement of fishing to spawn, spawning fish. This is simply saying eggs are in the system in October. They're in the system in November, in December, in January, in February. And March. In March, in April. Shit, in May. Bro, the suckers run, you know? Matching suckers. The match. Right. Suckers spawn. Right. Like yep. the, they all spawn. Eggs are food. They're going to be in the system. Yep. You know? Everybody knows it. Everybody fishes it. Everybody. Yep. Like, you'll go to those tailwaters and there'll be, like, the little clicks in, like, the different parts of the parking lot. And everyone's taking some shots at that group over there. And they're taking the shots. And everyone's, like, probably fishing an egg of some sort. Like, that is a fact. That's just a fact. <laughs> and when they're eating eggs, you're catching more fish than you've ever caught before ever in your life. So. Thanks for tuning in to Five Flies for October. Appreciate you, Courtney, coming down. Absolutely. Anytime. Tanner, Sorry. if you ever want to come by and talk about eggs anymore, I love the passion. Jack will be your, Jack loves the, the spirit. eggs too. Jack Wickman, me and Jack Wickman. You don't need to you don't need to like Everybody hey man, it's okay. Hey guys. It's a guilt free zone. Cheers to eggs. Yeah, cheers to eggs. Oh damn, I'm already out. <laughs> me too. Damn. All right. Well, cheers to eggs. Have a good uh October on the water. And uh yeah, we'll see you next month for November. Elon Stribling. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be all beads and comedy. Beads and comedy. Can't promise it's going to be that, but it's certainly going to be comedy. For sure. For sure. That might be all we have. We might, yeah. (laughs) Have a good night. And goodbye.